Once upon a time in the early 2000s, there was the original Bionicle storyline, a Lego action figure series about robotic characters that wore masks and controlled the elements, kind of like Avatar The Last Airbender combined with the Power Rangers. Because the characters were like robots, it made sense to take them apart and put their pieces back together. But what was even more significant about Bionicle is how it presented its narrative across multiple platforms of media, from comics to movies to video games and chapter books. If you're not familiar with any of them, that's okay, because I'm going to condense and explain the narrative's lore right here, right now. This is Lava Pasta's Guide to Bionicle. Following the Lego Technic Slicer, Throwbots, and Robo Riders themes, Bionicle 2001 began on a very strong foundation, with a beautiful environment and iconic imagery. Six characters Tahu, Kopaka, Pohatu, Lewa, Gali, and Onua emerge from canisters on a mission to find great masks of power and bring peace to the island of Matanui, named after the great spirit Matanui who has been put to sleep by his evil brother Makuta. Under normal circumstances, I would usually just buy all the red characters because red is my favorite color, but if I had the opportunity to go back in time to the year 2001, I would purchase all six members of the original Toa team, because they all feel very distinct from one another and have some of the best character designs for this time period. Ironically, the main inhabitants of the Tropical Island setting were initially only available as promotional McDonald's toys that were originally called the Tohunga, until a controversy regarding the Maori people of New Zealand inspired Lego to change their species name to Matoran. These characters lived in six elemental color-coded villages around the island, and were led by their Taraga elders, who were more widely available in retail stores. Each character wore one of 12 Kanohi masks that could be found individually in blind boxes as part of the story's collectathon objective, but could also be used for creating original characters. If you want to revisit and experience Bionicle's origins for yourself, I highly recommend playing the Flash-based Mata Nui online game, a point-and-click adventure story with polished artwork and awesome fight sequences, in which the player explores the island as one of the Matoran characters. Unfortunately for the female fans of Bionicle, the only female characters that exist within the island society are all part of the Water Tribe, while the five other villages consist completely of male characters, which doesn't give them a whole lot of representation. Look, I don't know about you, but I feel as though limiting your female characters to one-sixth of your population for no reason isn't just obviously sexist, it's boring and kind of restricts your imagination to just one element. For a company that promotes imagination, LEGO's Bionicle series doesn't seem to have much when it comes to female characters. 2002 saw the release of the Borok Swarms, a more cost-efficient alternative to the Rahi Beast villains of 2001, with Krana masks inside of their heads and a brilliant toy design that maximizes playability. While they are supposed to give off the impression of an army, my only problem with the Borok is that they're all palette swaps of the same build that was reused for 12 different iterations, so as awesome and popular as the Borok are, they're pretty much all the same. This Bionicle gear also introduced box-sized Titan sets, including some additional female representation with Godok and Kadok, the dinosaur queens of the Borok Swarms, along with the mecha robot Exotoa armor, which is awesome in theory, but not in practice. Once the Borok queens are defeated at the end of 2002, the six regular Toa are then transformed into Toa Nuva, with new armor and dual weapon functionality with the best example being Tahu Nuva's Magma Blades that can transform into a lava surfboard. 
85721 Tahu Nuva was the first Bionicle set I definitely wanted, but I waited too long and it vanished from store shelves before I even got the chance. Press F to pay your respects. 2003 consisted of the Toa Nuva from the previous year facing off against the elite Borok Cal Squadron, as well as six canister-sized villains in the form of the Rakshi, which along with redesigned Matoran builds and several Titan sets, including Makuta himself in physical form for the very first time, all tie into Bionicle the video game which I still own for the Nintendo GameCube and the feature-length Mask of Light movie. Bionicle The Mask of Light follows the player character from the Mata Nui online game and his best friend from the McDonald's toys going on a quest to find the seventh Toa of Elemental Light. While I'm not a fan of the voice acting or the animation style in this movie, and yes, it is basically a ripoff of Lord of the Rings, I do like how the narrative includes all six Toa Nuva, but is more about the Matoran characters and their personal growth, which would set the stage for future years in the Bionicle story. If we fast forward all the way to 2008, it is eventually revealed that the island of Matanui wasn't named simply out of reverence, it was actually part of Matanui himself who in reality is a giant robot with an entire universe inside of his body. And the best part is, this idea was planned from before the very beginning of the story. This entire time, Bionicle, short for Bionic Chronicle, has been about heroes arriving in medicine canisters to fight against an evil virus. And considering how this revelation completely changes the audience's perspective, it is one of my favorite plot twists in media history. Without a doubt, the early years of Bionicle's narrative from 2001 to 2003 were the best in the series, and most of my reasoning for that is due to its beautiful setting as well as its presentation. I absolutely love the island environment and how it helped to create the perfect introduction to the Bionicle story because there's really something to be said for the simplistic image of an action figure striking a dynamic pose in front of a colorful background. Given just how much effort and graphic design skills that were put into a LEGO toy series, any fan can tell you that this theme was more than the sum of its parts. Bionicle is a work of art.